Greetings everyone and welcome to my Federation tutorial. This is a companion guide to the other video I released, the new player guide. That video is a conceptual guide to playing the game. This one is more of a hands-on let's play style tutorial where I actually show you what to click and what to do. So we're going to play as the United Federation of Planets. You can hover your mouse over to get some tool tips for all these sorts of bonuses and explanations about what your uh, faction is good at and what they're not good at, what kind of bonuses they get. There is a settings menu down here, which is unique to this screen. It has a lot of useful settings in it. The two that you might care about initially are the difficulty and Iron Man mode. The difficulty, the way it works in this game, they can't really make the AI smarter, so increasing the difficulty just gives bonus research and resources to uh, one of the players or the other. If you put it down from Ensign, which is the default, then you'll get bonuses. Putting it up to Captain, Commodore, Admiral, that's the one I normally play at, or Grand Admiral, will give the computer players more resources and research. Iron Man mode basically just means that you can only ever have one save at a time. And you need to have that enabled in order to get achievements. So you could probably leave all this alone to start with, but it's something you might want to look at as you get a little more comfortable with the game. So engage. Okay, and we've just popped into the game here. We're not really going to stay on this screen. There was a little AI companion there who can help give you some advice on how to play, but we don't need him today. You have me. I'm your AI companion. So there isn't a lot you want to do on this solar system screen. You can zoom in here if you want to, you know, see all the all the different models and stuff, but it's really actually has no practical value. Uh, one of the things you might want to do on this screen, though, is your governor. So we see on the right hand side, we have our four planets, the Earth, Andoria, Vulcan, Teller Prime. We have one shipyard in the shipyard list. We have one fleet, which is our first fleet. They just get numbered automatically. And we have our three civilian ships, a constructor, a science ship, and a governor ship. In order to use the governors, you need to be in the solar system view. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. We're going to right click on the earth and it's going to give us some options for bonuses that the governor can provide. So we're going to improve worker production because I think that's the best one starting out. Then we want to get out of this view and go to the galaxy. Click this big galaxy map button and we can take our time here because the game does start off paused although I am going to increase the speed for when we do unpause it so we can see more of the game in this video. Now, we wanna make sure that we go through everything uh, that we have available to us and that we have configured it and that it will all be working towards our interests once we unpause the game. We have uh, the menu over here on the left, which is sort of the main menu of things you can do. There, some of them are mapped to the F1 through F10 hotkeys. The victory screen shows us the balance of power in the galaxy right now. Cardassians start off the strongest, and uh, we're tied with the Romulans for second strongest, but it's pretty even. Then we have the mission log. There's nothing in here right now. Contacts, you can pretty much ignore this screen. Markets, we'll talk about later. Planet management, you can more or less ignore. It is useful once you start getting a lot more planets. The expansion planner. So, is surveyed. This checkbox shows us planets that have been surveyed and uh, is colonizable we want to click on that so that we know whether we can actually colonize them or not and over here we can say what the minimum habitability is we're going to want 80 percent or more so we see we have a couple planets we could colonize we don't have a colony ship currently so that is something that's going to be a priority for us so we can colonize one of these planets uh, we also have edicts and policies i'm going to leave these alone right now this one's going to cost us energy credits so i don't want to do that this one is going to increase uh, Starbase uh, upgrade cost, which I don't think really matters all that much. So yeah, let's go ahead and take that because it is going to give us build speed, which is going to be nice. We can only have one edict. The food thing, we don't want to run out of food. We need food, so we don't want to give that up. This one will give us some research bonuses, but we're not going to build that many science ships. We are going to build a lot, but not that many, and the research would be nice but we can only have one edict right now, so let's go ahead and take this one. Policies, we're gonna leave this alone. Traditions, we're gonna come back to that once we have some unity. Ship designer, we're gonna ignore. Fleet manager, we're gonna ignore right now. We need to set our technologies. So, click this first one here, no bonuses. So none of these categories line up with our scientist here. Survey speed plus 33% looks pretty good. Let's click on that. 
Uh, okay, administrative capacity is super valuable. I like that. So let's go ahead and click on that one. And then down here, let's see. Oh, minerals, huge. We definitely want to increase our mineral and energy credit uh, production. So anything that gives us extra minerals is going to be something that we want to take. Come down here, species. You can see it does line up with our planets. We have Earth, Andoria, Vulcan, Teller, and those are the species we have. Andorians, humans, Tellarites, and Vulcans. But you can click on that if you want to see uh, their traits and everything like that. Then we come down here and we have the leaders tab and it's going to tell you what the cap is. So we can have three governors, we can have two admirals, two generals, we can't have any spies to start with. We can have six scientists. We don't need any more right now, but we are going to be recruiting some more soon. So we really only have, we could assign, uh, get some more governors and assign them to some of the other planets, but let's hold off on that for right now. Let's go ahead and go through our planets. So uh, what we have here is our uh, planet stability. For the whole empire, it's 86%, which is pretty good. We have our spread, which is just sort of says how spread out we are. Have we grown too big for our own good? And uh, that can be a difficult thing to manage. We need administrative capacity for that. Envoys, we don't have any envoys. So once we get those, we're going to want to assign them. And then officers. It's not really something you need to worry about too much. Uh, we'll generate those and they get put onto your ships. So we definitely want our mineral economy to be as strong as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mineral district there. We click this arrow here to go to Andoria. I'd like to add another one, but we're lacking the minerals. You need the minerals to uh, build things to get more minerals. So we're going to go ahead and click on this and use our money to buy some more minerals. Now I'm going to come in here. Before we go ahead and start building the stuff on the planets, I'm going to click this uh, exploration map mode so we can see the resources available uh, on the different systems here. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff. This one has three minerals, but it's kind of far away. Let's start by building out uh, the Earth first. So we're going to click our construction ship, right click here. Oh, can I get it here? And uh, we want to click build mining station. Okay, now we have 600 minerals left. So let's go back to Andoria and go ahead and pay 300 to build this uh, mining district here. This planet is not our capital planet, so we can give it a designation. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a mining world designation so we can get that mining bonus. Our uh, technicians and farmers are going to output less, but our miners will output more come over here we want to make sure that our miners uh, we don't have any yet it hasn't actually started making any but let's uh, we'll be able to set that later so we're gonna come back over here to Vulcan and we want to add a mining district to that as well but I'm not going to set that we have a huge capacity uh, energy districts so I think even though it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, making it an energy world eventually would be a good idea we can change this whenever we want so let's go ahead and make this a mining world initially for now as well so we have gone through our planets or go through our shipyards and uh, in order for it to be a shipyard it needs to be a star base that has a shipyard module we only have one of those right now we don't have any alloys and we don't have enough food to build a colony ship which we'd like to do so we're gonna need to get some more resources before we can do that our fleet can't really do much our science ship can explore you have to explore and survey a system before you can start building there. And we probably want to come over here near Bajor because I think we're eventually going to want to rescue Bajor. So let's check our mission tree here. So we have uh, these sorts of uh, tasks here. So we need to get scientists assigned to science ships. We need to survey 10 systems. Then we can unlock these. We can start working on the Enterprise. We need to research some anomalies. We need to contact minor powers, uh, research agreements, and uh, all this kind of a stuff here. Um, we are going to need to uh, rescue Bajor, I think at some point. So down here, if we want to get this, this is not a branching path. We're allowed to do this as well as the branching path over here. So we're going to need Bajor to be within the United Federation of Planet Borders. So let's go ahead and instead of just, if we want, you could just tell it to automatically survey, but I want to control where it goes. So let's check out this planet over here near Bajor so we can start settling near it to make it a little bit easier to get it under our control and actually we can start talking to them now uh, we can improve relations but we don't have any envoys yet we'll be able to come back and do that later 
we have this support independence button uh, if they declare war on their overlord will automatically be at war with them too so basically it's a defense pact where we're saying we'll defend uh, Bajor if they go to war with Cardassia but we'll just leave that alone right now so we're not gonna mess with that just yet and I think finally after all that we're ready to unpause the game so I'm gonna hit the space button and let's go ahead and get things started in here so it's telling us that we have these new options here uh, for going to war basically uh, we don't have a lot of war options as the Federation uh, this is an event when events pop up it automatically pauses the game again so this is talking about the uh, Kittimer massacre which is in the trailer for the game and we have our choice here uh, what do we want to set our protocols to we want to be proactive so we want to get people into the Federation it's also telling us because I ordered the deluxe edition which you shouldn't feel obligated to do uh, that we have the Cerritos available so that's just kind of you know whatever if we click on any of the Cardassian planets here we can see we have you know some options available to us independence supported so let's go ahead and pause this real quick oh it paused this for us so our entire intelligence community is hard at work attempting to learn the full truth about the Kittimer uh, uh, plot we only have one choice here and we are going to get some uh, unity just from cl uh, clicking that go ahead and pause it here so the romulan star empire is now supporting the independence of the Bajoran Republic. It's something we failed to do, actually. Uh, but let's say we did want to start a war with the Cardassian unit. If I click on that, we have some options here. Uh, liberation War can't do that because it says we don't have the uh, any subject causes Belli on the Cardassian Union. So that's that thing it was telling us about earlier. We can only do Humiliation Wars, which just you know isn't really all that useful so let's go ahead and unpause here and we have these notifications up here at the we top so to uh, let's go ahead and pause it again so we can take care of these and uh, the Betazoid houses are offering a research agreement so we will both get bonuses to research uh, so that's just seems like a no win or Look a no brainer man. The Klingons want a, an embassy, so let's go ahead and agree to that. We'll do our best to and understand. the Betazoid houses also want an embassy. And then over we'll here, we got a commercial pact. You. So basically, it's going to increase the trade network value uh, with with the uh, Betazoid. So that seems good as well. And actually, that gives us an opportunity to look at the trade value situation. So we click on the trade routes mode. We can see that the Soul System is the only one we have here. Show the collection range, so we can see. Uh, the where all the planets we can collect from with that one solar system Okay, it was unable to build the mining station. So the resources have been refunded uh, Let's come back over here and try it again. I Think it's because we were busy building. Oh, you can see this popped up a lot, right? So let's go ahead and pause it again so you might remember earlier we were only gaining 20 minerals per month now we're gaining 75 Okay, so the, the bar has finished on these, so we can c come back over here, and now we have our two mining districts, and each one is producing uh, 15 each. And uh, for this planet, initially for, for Earth, uh, you can see we're starting to run low on credits. I think we want our technicians, which are our main uh, credit producers, to be the main job. So I'm gonna click this to set technician as the main job type on Earth. And then we're going to come back over here to Andoria, which we've set to be a mining world. And we want miners to be the main ones over here because we're saying, at least for now, we want this to be a mining world. And then we have Vulcan as well. And unfortunately, I think if we do that on Vulcan, we're going to run into trouble. So uh, since we do have energy districts on Vulcan, I'm going to set the technicians to the main one over here too. So we don't want our energy credits. We're only getting seven per month. We're dangerously close to going into the negative on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and unpause it so we can keep going here and see what we can do. And at the beginning of the game, things are a little bit slow. There's not a lot happening. Um, we, our governor ship is doing its thing. Our construction ship is doing its thing. Science ship is doing its thing. Let's check in on it over here. And we can see our intel level is high. And if we click and come in here, you can actually see it moving around and actually surveying all the little you know, planets and stuff. So that's pretty neat. And let's go ahead and check this out. A tradition is available. So we're gonna be able to pick our first tradition. 
Now, we have to choose carefully. They're going to go fairly quickly at first. They're going to slow down drastically as time goes by. Uh, and eventually we'll be able to get one of these uh, ascension perks, but only if you get all five in one of these trees. So, the default federation one here is going to give us population growth, colonizer build cost, constructor build cost, science ship build cost. That's pretty useful early on. Uh, and this one's going to give us some administrative capacity, which is nice. We're going to get a bunch of bonuses. And uh, so it's just a really, really nice one. All of the uh, ones that are tailored to a specific faction are all really good here. Conquest is nice if you think you're going to be in a lot of wars. Defense can be good as well. If you think you're playing more defensive as the Federation, we might go for defense. Research is always a bit underwhelming for me. De development is, uh, they're both underwhelming to be honest, but I normally pick development, commerce, welfare. I think we're going to go ahead and start with the unique federation one. The first time you unlock it, it really just unlocks it. And then you have to get another point to sort of put something into it. But this pioneers one is pretty good. So we'll probably pick that the next time we get a chance. Okay, we're going to unpause it here. Constructor ship is constructing, and so, so you know, we're just taking a moment here. Well, our construction ship is making something, our science ship is exploring something, our governor ship is providing us with bonuses, our fleet is hanging out in an advantageous position. We don't really have the food we need to build uh, a, a survey ship, but we might be able to build some other stuff. So, we know we need some science ships. So, let's go ahead and queue up a science ship, and actually, we probably want a couple science ships. I think we want another constructor as well. That way we can survey more stuff and we can get some more of these. We want all of these to have star bases on them. So we're going to queue up another science ship and another constructor so we can increase the speed at which we're, we're kind of doing all this without really dragging down our food. Unfortunately, our food is kind of waffling here. It was down to plus one. We definitely don't want to go into the negative on our food. We are up to plus 90 on minerals, so we have lots of minerals. Our mineral su uh, supply is starting to look pretty good. Okay, so we now have an opportunity to get our first spy. So let's take a look at what espionage looks like. The Kinema report has come in and we have two options here. We can either give the logs to the Klingons, in which case we get some uh, research and uh, other people's opinion, the Klingon Empire's opinion of us goes up by 50. Or we can destroy the logs, we still get a spy, but we get 50 intel on the Klingons, we get some unity and some research, but not as much research if we choose the other option. But if we're role playing as the Federation, I think we have to give them the log. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we're going to go ahead and pause again. And let's, we scroll down here, we now have a spy ship. So it has a much larger range, you'll notice, than our other ships. Spy ships can go pretty much anywhere. They can go into other factions, even if they have their borders closed. So just to illustrate again, if I, if I choose first fleet, this is the warp range for any ship that has to be within our uh, sort of warp range. But if I click on the spy ship, it can go anywhere. So I think Cardassia is our main target here. They're the most powerful faction and they are also the ones that we need to rescue Bajor from. So I'm gonna go ahead and send our spy ship there and we'll catch up with it in a moment once it actually arrives. Okay, so our spy ship has arrived. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the game. We're going to click on it here, and then we need to click on one of the planets. We'll click on Cardassia Prime. We could also click on their star base here. And I'm going to tell it to try and uh, steal bl blueprints. It only has a 40% chance of working. It's probably not going to work, but this is how the espionage stuff works. So we also have our next tradition available, and we've already unlocked the progress tree, which is a special federation one. So we're going to go ahead and pick this uh, Pioneers one that should be pretty useful to us. And we'll check in again in a little bit when we have some more to say. Okay, so we have enough resources to get our first colony ship. So I'm going to click on that here after selling some credits to buy food. And we're going to go ahead and we need to pick which race or which species we want to put on that colony ship. And Dorians are pretty good because they have a pop housing usage of minus 50%, which makes them, you know, not very, very uh, resource intensive on the new colony. So I'm going to go ahead and pick them and uh, we'll check in again when we're actually able to colonize our first planet. 
Okay, our first colony ship is ready, so let's go back to our expansion planner. And we see that the number of habitable systems uh, has increased from what we had before. Still not as many as we would like in the 80% uh, range. That hasn't changed any, but when we unclick this to colonizable, we see that Wolf 359 has shown up here. And that's because we have checked the system out, but it's not in our control yet. So we're going to have to build a star base there if we eventually want to colonize it, which I think we do. But let's go ahead and take Ryza first because it is 100% habitability. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, we're going to click on Ryza here and we click on the planet. We already have a colony ship ready to go. So you can see these have the costs associated with them, but the top one doesn't because we've already set that one up. So we're going to click on it and go ahead and let it be named Ryza and we'll give that a minute. It takes a while for the planet to actually colonize. Okay, we just were able to recruit a new character who was an admiral. So we're going to go ahead and assign her to our first fleet. So when I click on first fleet over here, it shows up on the left side. I can click this plus button. I now see I have uh, Necheyev, uh, who is one of the characters from TNG, and we were able to recruit her. So I'm going to go ahead and set her as the admiral for this fleet. Okay, we have envoys available now. So I'm going to go ahead and set one each to the Romulans and one to the Klingons. We may have to recall some of them later because they can be used to operate in the other major factions. But when you're making contact with a new minor power, you do need an envoy in order to do that. So Jill we'll go ahead and set them for now. Improve relations. We have two here available, except. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here for the Klingons. Any planet will do. Improve relations. We'll select the other one that's available. Put them on it and now we are improving our relations with the romulans and the klingons okay we have completed our first mission in the mission tree so let's go ahead and take a look at that where no one has gone before we have two scientists assigned to science ships and we've now surveyed past our 10th uh, system and when we click on this we will uh, unlock the next options and we will get an effect which is for t only 10 years anomaly discovery chance 20 percent anomaly research speed 10 percent so i'm going to click on that and now we have access to the next ones we need to start researching anomalies i haven't been doing it so far but we can start to work on it we don't have anywhere near enough alloys to get the enterprise but that's okay because we're still focusing on building up our resource generators Okay, we're going to take a moment to merge two of our fleets together. We have first fleet with 10 out of 20 and second fleet with 6 out of 10. So I'm going to click on first fleet, then I'm going to shift click on second fleet, and then we see this merge button right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And when I unpause it, they're going to come together. We have surveyed a new and uh, they we are going to... to understand you. All right, sorry if people will stop interrupting us here. So uh, they want to go ahead and make some proposals we'll agree to that and we'll give it us a second here and our fleets have been merged so now first fleet exists second fleet is gone and first fleet has 16 out of 20 also Ryza has finished colonizing so let's go ahead and take a look at it here stability is not too great it's only 54 percent we are in need of housing so i'm going to click on buildings and we're going to go ahead and add some housing center here so that it can build up some housing okay we're going to start the integration process for the betazoid houses if we were doing a military conquest we would declare war with them and then send in our uh, our military ships and our uh, transport ships take them over then we would win the war and it would say hey you've won and you would get the planets but we're playing as the federation so we integrate people in instead so we're going to propose it here and it even shows you the little green check marks here to say that they're, they're pretty much they're going to do it so we're going to go ahead and click that here and we'd like to begin the integration process so we're going to click confirm and now we just need to wait for that to play out okay so we finally fully integrated betazoid into the federation and you can see now down here it used to be its own thing but now it is part of us and we get all the resources that go along with that, including 15 minerals, 8 energy credits, 7 deuterium, 5 research, as well as all the trade value it provides, and, uh, and an extra planet, an extra population, and all those 
resources it shows up on our planet list now so we can go ahead and click on it and I'm gonna go ahead and pause it again and we can see all of the stuff that it already has it already has a forge a replicator and whatnot we can see that they do have a severe housing shortage so I'm gonna go ahead and build a housing quarter and uh, that's about all we have New the energy credits for and we'll get some population growth and that is about it can't really show you the invasive war stuff with the federation but you've pretty much seen what it's like to integrate other minor powers into the federation you just have to be nice to them the option will show up you click on it they'll say yes you wait a while for a bar to fill and then they will you know join the federation so um as you go out you'll find more minor civilizations like uh beta zeta that we started with you'll integrate those in and if we check now we can see that we actually have uh extra civics than we had before so we only had these two that we started with but because we integrated uh, the Betazoids into our civilization, we picked up their civic as well. So not only does that give us an extra passive boost, it gets us one step closer to one of the victory conditions, which is to have 12 uh, civics. So now we have three more than anyone else. We're slowly creeping up to take over as the number one power in the galaxy. It took way longer for me to do that on Admiral difficulty, but here on the default difficulty, we're doing it pretty quickly. It's actually tied right now. So probably here pretty soon, we're gonna go ahead and overtake them thanks to the boost we got from integrating a new civilization into ours. And uh, we can even get a new uh, Ascension perk for the first time we finished our tree. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Ascension perks, and that will get us to the end of the video here. There is a lot of different ones. I'm going to go over these in their own video. But one of the ones that I especially like is this one called Ours for the Taking, because it gives you a whole bunch of resources every time you clear a planetary blocker, and it also gives you a lot more mining station output. So there are other good ones you could pick as your first one. But uh, I think this is a nice one for anyone to take, so I'm going to go ahead and this take that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. There will be more videos in the future. So set those phasers to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.